My name is Samir Tricker. I'm a consultant ophthalmic surgeon at King's College Hospital in London, and I'm also the Chief Medical Officer at Vigility. Hi, I'm John Bolger from My Eye Clinic, consultant ophthalmologist. So my talk is really about artificial intelligence and how the development of clinical decision support systems are going to be assisting both optometrists and ophthalmologists in terms of their practice. I was talking about today artificial intelligence and machine learning in ophthalmology and optometry. With optometry, like a lot of primary eye care, we see patients with lots of different conditions and high volumes of patients often come through our, our services. And really, in an attempt to try and help de-risk what we do, in an attempt to provide us with specialist opinion, AI can really help to provide that added decision support to allow us to make better diagnoses for our patients. One of the things artificial intelligence will be brilliant at is looking at huge amounts of data and looking for patterns within that data. So it could very well, we could very well find ourselves quite soon in a situation where AI is looking at data that we think is plain and boring, but it's able to see within that there are patterns and diagnose diseases that either earlier or even maybe new diseases that we're not aware of. Like when OCT came in, there are conditions we didn't think existed until we did OCT. So I think AI is going to add very positively to how we as clinicians analyze data from our patients, whether it's image data, uh, field of vision results data, or blood test data. It'll, it'll help us be more precise. So AI really can assist um, ophthalmic practitioners in a number of different ways, um, allowing us to take better imaging in one way, and another way is to take very early stages of pathologies like glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy, which of course could be very, very important for patients so that they can be detected early, diagnosed early, and ultimately treated so that their vision doesn't deteriorate. Machine learning is already helping in ophthalmology. One of the things I saw at the show it was the uh, device which would be worn by a blind or partially sighted person and it's able to identify and read images. It can tell whether it's a man or a woman. It can help them navigate and be um, sort of more connected to their environment even though they can't see it. And that is entirely artificial intelligence and machine learning. It's brilliant. So I would say in terms of being commonplace, probably six to 12 months from being, being part of everyday practice. You either decide that you're going to use AI or you're going to be used by AI. And there's, if, you sit on the, if you sit on the fence or stay on one side, you're going to be someone who's going to be used by AI. If you want to take advantage of what AI has to offer, you have to get into it. You have to understand it. You have to know what it can do. You have to know what its potential is and, and embrace it in a way that's positive. These sort of solutions are coming to the market very, very soon and that they're not going to replace our work, but rather assist us and work in a symbiotic manner to essentially allow us to, do, uh, to make better, better, more accurate decisions um, in, a, in a quicker time period. Nobody has a problem with designing a machine that can lift heavier objects than a man or a woman can lift. They think, that, oh, that's a great invention. But the idea that something can think better than us is quite terrifying. And maybe that's because we define ourselves as thinking animals rather than running or lifting animals and maybe that's something that attacks the core of our identity and something that w there's nothing on the planet that's cleverer than us. AI is here to help us, it's going to be here to allow us to make better decisions for our patients um, in a way that empowers us to be able to value differentiate and ultimately provide the best possible quality of care for our patients coming through the doors. There's a lot of research in the AI world trying to make sure that AI doesn't take over. That, that, that sort of leading edge AI people are concerned that whatever AI they bring out doesn't get smarter than us. And I think the first thing AI would do if it did get smarter with us is it would pretend to be dumber than us. The, that would be, the, it's, uh, in my view, that would be its first strategy. Don't let them know we're now cleverer than they are. It does sound a bit like a science fiction. It, it does sound like science fiction, but it isn't. Yeah. It's, it's now.